Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hey, what's going on, everybody? You got Tommy and Randy here. With everything going on in the world now, especially over in the Middle East, over in Israel, we kind of want to cover a topic that goes over who is the true Israel and uh, what does the Bible say about it? Randy, do you want to start us off with this study? Yeah. So we have questions today like literal Israel or spiritual Israel, and what does the Bible say? So we're going to go over some questions on this. We're going to briefly go through some scriptural answers because we have a lot more, but we can't do it in our 20, 25, 30-minute time limit, and we don't want to sit here and bore you. But who is the Israel or who is the church of the Bible? So the doctrine of dispensationalism states that the church of Christ, which was born on the day of Pentecost, was recorded in Acts chapter 2, is definitely a part of God's covenant with Abraham and David. It is believed that the Christian church, with its gospel of grace, is only an interruption of God's original plan with Israel, unforeseen by the Old Testament prophets and having no connection with God's promises of an earth kingdom to Abraham, Moses, and David. While there are differences of opinion among Christian scholars who teach about Bible prophecy, the majority firmly believe the following five events have been definitely predicted by God to occur before the second coming of Christ. And let's look at them. Number one, the rebirth of the state of Israel in 1948. Number two, a soon coming seven-year period of great tribulation. Number three, the rebuilding of the third Jewish temple on the Temple Mount inside Jerusalem. Number four, the rise of a mysterious man, the Antichrist, who will enter this rebuilt Jewish temple proclaiming himself as God. And number five, the final war against the nation of Israel resulting in a Middle East battle of Armageddon exploding the Israel deception. That comes from, and I have to give his name, he's a Trinitarian, Steve Wahlberg, page nine. So let's look at Israel, number one, in the Old Testament. Let's look at Israel, number two, in the New Testament. And let's look, number three, at Israel in Revelation. So let me give a little background here. Let's look at the Old Testament. Tommy, would you take that as far as Jacob had his name changed? Yes. So in the Old Testament, Jacob has name changed to Israel. The first time the name Israel is used in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 32, verses 27 and 28. After Jacob wrestled with the angel, and Jacob would not let go until he received a blessing, the angel said, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, meaning Prince of God. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. So the name Israel was given to Jacob as a spiritual name. Jacob's self-sufficiency was gone. He was willing to give up self and follow God. His new spiritual name referred to his character. The name Jacob means deceiver. So the name change symbolizes his transformation and character. Israel's, or Jacob's, sons are called Israelites, heirs of Israel. The children of Israel went into Egypt, Exodus chapter 1, verse 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt, Every man in his household came with Jacob. And then the twelve sons of Jacob, or Israel, are named. These are the literal children of Israel, children of Jacob who went into Egypt. Israel is called my son, my firstborn. Exodus chapter 4, verse 21 and 22 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart, and that he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. No, the whole nation is now called Israel, not just Jacob Israel. The nation of Israel is called a vine. Psalms chapter 80 verse 8 says, Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt, thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. The nation of Israel is called a servant. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 8 says, But thou Israel art my servant. Jacob, of whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Isaiah 49, verse 3 says, And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 3 says, 
Behold my servant. This chapter outlines God's original plan for Israel, which they failed to follow. Hosea chapter 11 verse 1 says, When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Note, the nation of Israel is called, one, my son, two, a vine, three, the seed of Abraham, four, God's servant, and five, my son that God brought out of Egypt. Note also, Joseph, whose father was Jacob or Israel, had dreams and went into Egypt. Good job, Tommy. Now, let's see how the New Testament lines up with the five statements you made in the Old. So, Jesus, we believe that Jesus is in the Old and New Testament and that he had a father. But let's see what the New Testament says about Israel, okay? So, in Matthew 1, 1, it says, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ. Notice the New Testament is about Jesus Christ, Tommy, not about Israel. I mean, it's in your Bible, the book of the generation of Israel. No, it's the book of the generation of Jesus Christ. And what is Jesus Christ, Tommy? The Son of God. And what does the Trinity deny? That Jesus is the Son of God. But the book of the generation starts out in Matthew 1, 1, that the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Yes. Okay, so Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, because he had a heavenly father, which was the Almighty, also had a father named Jacob. That's in Matthew 1, 16. Okay, now... Joseph also had a dream and went into Egypt. Wow, Tommy. Matthew 2, 13. And when they departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. In Matthew 2, 15, it says, And he was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I shall call my son. So the New Testament in Matthew 2.15 is a direct quote from Hosea 11.1, 1, which was originally spoken of the nation of Israel. But now it refers to Christ as the fulfillment of the prophecy of the Hosea text. Wow, Tommy. Jesus is now... What? The new Israel. The prophecy is fulfilled in Israel. Okay, let's look at baptism now. Israel came out of Egypt and was baptized in the Red Sea, right, Tommy? Yes. Old Testament. In 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 2, Paul is speaking. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be aware that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud in the sea. Jesus came out of Egypt and was baptized in the Jordan. Matthew 3.16. And when Jesus, when he was baptized, went straight up out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God. Notice he saw the Spirit of God, right? Not yes. God the Spirit. Yes. Descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Okay, now let's look at in the wilderness. Israel had been baptized in the Red Sea and went into the wilderness for 40 years. You can read that in the Old Testament. Jesus, after he had been baptized, went in the wilderness for 40 days, Tommy. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. In the wilderness, Jesus was tempted three times. Each time he responded to Satan with text. All three texts that he quoted are from the book of Deuteronomy, the book given to Moses and the Israelites in the wilderness. That's Deuteronomy 8.3, Deuteronomy 6.16, and Deuteronomy 6.13. So, Jesus, the Son of God, by the way, Tommy, not God the Son, yes. is repeating the history of Israel. Jesus, the new Israel, is overcoming where the nation of Israel had failed. But by the way, it's a name, not a nation or nationality, right? Yes. Israel's a name that was given to a liar and deceiver after he wrestled with the angel, and he overcame to be blessed, and then he was given the name. Israel. It wasn't a nation. So Israel. When God brought Israel out of Egypt, they were brought to a mountain, Mount Sinai, where God gives them the law. Christ in Matthew chapter 5, after Jesus had been in the wilderness, he goes to a mountain to teach the Beatitudes. A practical explanation of the law, Tommy. Israel. God made a covenant with the 12 tribes with the blood of animals. Isn't that right, Tommy? There were sacrifices in the Old Testament, right? Yes. Even in the New, which led to their destruction because they denied that Jesus was the Son of God. 
Christ in Matthew 26, 28, Jesus meets with the 12 apostles and makes a new covenant. What? With his own blood, a new covenant with a new Israel. So who's the Israel in the New Testament, Tommy? It's the followers of Christ. And Jesus Christ. He's where our faith should be, not over there where they're bombing. God bless them. Get out of there. Get out of there, man. You know, get out of there because that's not the Israel. So anyway, Matthew 12, 15 through 18, behold my servant. The Old Testament of passions applied to Israel, but now it's fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Galatians 3, 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to the seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So here we go. Jesus is called my son, for 2 Peter 1, 17. He's called the vine, John 15, 1. He's called the seed of Abraham, Galatians 3, 16. He's called the servant, Matthew 12, 15 through 18. And he's called my son, God, which brought him out of Egypt, Matthew 2, 15. Israel was one man and his heirs became the nation of Israel. Jesus, Israel, is one man, and then his heirs are also Israel. So I'm going to stop there. There's plenty more to go down. I want you to look at and talk about the two Israels, Tommy. So in the two Israels, we can start off with Romans chapter 9, verses 3 through 8. There are two Israels in the New Testament. In verses 3 and 4, Israelites according to the flesh, and in verses 6 and 7, for they are not all Israel of God and Jesus Christ, which are of Israel, some who don't have the disposition of Christ, neither because they are seed of Abraham, are they all children? Even if they are direct blood descendants of Abraham, it doesn't make them children of Abraham. And verse 8, that is they which are the children of the flesh, literal nation of Israel. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise, who have the faith in Jesus Christ, are counted as the seed. This means all who truly believe in Jesus Christ, whether they are a Jew or a Gentile, makes no difference. It all depends on their spiritual belief in Jesus Christ. If they believe in Jesus Christ, they are children of Abraham. Question. Which Israel is Revelation referring to in which the promises will be fulfilled? In Revelation chapter 11, verse 8, it says, Spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. In spiritual Jerusalem. Uh, Revelation chapter 11 verse 19 says, Temple of God was open in heaven, ark of his testament inside law of God. Revelation chapter 7 verse 4 says, 144,000 of tribes of children of Israel. Revelation chapter 14 verse 1 says, 144,000 standing on Mount Zion. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 22 and 23 says, Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, church of the firstborn of Mount Zion. Revelation chapter 21 verse 10 says, Carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. Hold on, Tommy. I don't want to interrupt, but where is the holy Jerusalem descending out of? Heaven from God. So it's not on earth. No. If we take the Bible. Yes. Right? Okay, go ahead, Tommy. God bless. Didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're good. Revelation chapter 16, verse 12, River Euphrates dried up. Babylon's support system will dry up. The people that support deceptions of spiritual Babylon, preparing the way for the kings of the east. Revelation chapter 16, verse 16 says, Armageddon, a spiritual war between the followers of Christ and the followers of the beast power in Satan. Revelation chapter 17, verses 1, 3, and 5 talks about spiritual Babylon. Revelation chapter 17, verse 15 talks about the water. It's symbolic for people. Revelation chapter 11, verse 19, the temple of God open in heaven, ark of the testament seen. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, talks about the third angel. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, talks about keeping the commandments of God. Revelation chapter 16, verses 13, uh, it talks about three unclean counterfeit spirits of devils like frogs. Revelation chapter 16, verses 14 through 16, talks about the third frog or false prophet, manifestation of a false prophet, counterfeit third angel's message, false prophet equals false prophecy, go to the whole world to gather them to battle of the great day of the God Almighty. Revelation chapter 16 verse 17 talks about a heavenly temple, not an earthly temple. Revelation chapter 16 verses 19 talks about three parts, dragon, beast, and the false prophet. Revelation chapter 16 verses 15 and 16 tells us to watch out for deceptions, keep his garments, symbolic for righteousness of Jesus. 
These are all spiritual terms showing a spiritual Israel, not a literal Israel. Here is the key. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 46 and 47 says, Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man of the earth, earthly, the second man is the Lord from heaven. Explanation. The first is natural or the physical representation, and the second is the spiritual. The Old Testament is, in general, the description of the physical events that actually took place. The New Testament is the spiritual reality of what the physical Old Testament illustration looked forward to. The Old Testament testifies of Jesus. Jesus says so himself. How can anyone be a New Testament Christian and disregard the Old Testament when Jesus says the Old Testament is about him? No, Jesus does not say the Old Testament is about Israel. Well, that's a good point, isn't it? Jesus yes. does not say the Old Testament is about Israel. So who do you think started this Israel deception? Satan. Right, and who promotes it? Uh, Anyone papacy. that's a yeah. follower of Satan? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So the Old Testament, Tommy, is Christ-centered, not Israel-centered. Yes. Right? The Old Testament must only be interpreted in a Christ-centered manner. Jesus said more than Jonah is here, more than Solomon's here, more than the temple is here. The whole Old Testament points to Christ as fulfilling the Messianic prophecies. In Zephaniah chapter 3, 9, verse 12 and 13, Then I will purify the lips of thy peoples, everyone, that all of them may call upon the name of the Lord and serve him shoulder to shoulder. But I leave you with the meek and the humble who trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel will do no wrong. They will speak no lies, nor will there be deceit found in their mouths. They will eat and lie down, and no one will make them afraid. In Joel chapter 2, verse 18 and 32, it says, And afterward I will pour out my spirit on all people. They should have put Israel there. Yes. The one overseas, it says all. You might want to underline that word all in Zephaniah in your Bible. All people. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance, as the Lord had said among the survivors whom the Lord calls. In Genesis chapter 12, all. You might want to underline that word all again. You might want to look that up in the Hebrew too. Uh, and the Greek, all people will be blessed through Abraham. How many people will be blessed through Abraham? All. Oh. Abraham was called out of what, Tommy? Babylon. Babylon. Uh, all people have been blessed through Jesus who come through the line of Abraham. Now, let me ask you something, Tommy. Is God calling people out of Babylon today? Yes. But we find that in Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. Let me read it. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, it's a heavenly message. That's why you heard a voice from heaven, right, Tommy? Yes. Come out of her, my people. Now, that should have just said Israel there, shouldn't it? Yes. But it says, my people, that you be not partaker of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Now, I want to go one scripture above, Revelation chapter 18, 3. It says, for all nations, not some nations, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. We'll get to her fornication. Now, Tommy, is the state of Israel a nation? Yes. When did it become a nation? 1948. Uh, so are they included in this scripture? Yes. Wow. Go to your Bible, not to man. It's a deception of man. Now, we're praying for the brothers and sisters to stop killing one another over there. Stop murdering, but I don't think that'll ever cease. They might have peace, but it'd be a false peace. So where's our peace at, Tommy? Is it in Israel overseas, or is it in the Israel of the Bible, which is Christ Jesus? It's in the Son of God. And why do we really talk so much about the Son of God and not God the Son? Because he's the only way to the Father, and he's the only way to receive eternal life. Right. So when we're talking about the pagan trinity, which is being promoted, our tritheism, our twinity, as uh, some would promote, then you're really worshiping a false messiah and you're worshiping in vain. Yes. Wow. What a deception. And won't look in your own Bible to see if these things are so, Tommy. To see if these things are true. Won't take the time to look into your Bible. 
We know, Tommy, that this is a worldwide plan, not a plan just for one group of people, right? Yeah. So Revelation 6 describes end-time events centering in the judgment. Revelation 6, 12 through 17, the six seals. The sky recedes like a scroll rolling up, and every mountain and island were moved from its place. That's in verse 14. Then the kings of the earth, this means universal worldwide, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, every slave, every free man hid in the caves among the rocks of the mountains. That means Bill Gates and all the rest, right? Yep. They're still alive, you know, because it talks about the rich men. Yes. I, I imagine that's in the trillions, billions, and trillions. A million doesn't make you rich anymore today. It has to be in the billions, like 50 billion. 170 billion, you know what I mean? Yeah. Revelation 7, 4, and by the way, the rich can't go to heaven, but it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle because you'll love the riches more than you'll love the Son of God and the Father. Yeah. doesn't mean there won't be rich people, but uh, they won't love money more than they will the truth in yeah. God's Word. So, Tommy, what do you say? The conclusion is what John sees is an explanation of what he first hears. He hears about the lion, but he sees the lamb. The lion and the lamb are the same. By the way, all these terms in Revelation are from the Old Testament. The lamb, remember, what did they sacrifice? They sacrificed a male lamb that was perfect, not a female. And it, it had to be perfect with no imperfections. And what did that lamb represent? The son of God. And then you had the lion from the tribe of Judah, the yes. lion. Then you had Israel, the Israel of Christ. So in Matthew 16, chapter 16, 6 through 18, how does God call his own people? When Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. This is what Jesus said after he said that, Tommy. Flesh and blood has not told you this. What? This has not been a revelation from man, from the church, but it has been a direct revelation from God to you. Jesus continued, on this rock, in other words, this doctrine that Jesus is truly the Son of God, I will build my church. On this rock, the doctrine that Jesus will be our teacher rather than organized denominations of churches through his Spirit, through the Son. So, Tommy, I'm not going to go on. We have a lot more. I know you're going to post this, but the Israel of the Old Testament has now been replaced, Tommy, by the church are called out ones of the New Testament, and they're called out to who? Jesus, the Son of God. Just like they were called out in the Old Testament to yes. Jesus, to the Son of God. Yes. But what do people want to do? They want to build a country and worship here, worship in vain, you know, and kill one another, yet the New Jerusalem is in heaven. Yeah, and the, the Israel now, they receive their name from man, from the government. So... We can understand the Old Testament through the New Testament. There's really no Old and New because 70 to 80% of New Testament Scripture is Old Testament Scripture. Yes. And, and if you want to focus on the, um, the literal Israel, God is not racist and God does not care about the land. Once the Jews rejected his son, do you think that he still is going to make the literal Jews? Do you think he's going to make that group of people, his chosen people, when they rejected and crucified his son, and they still reject him today. And Jew is not an ethnicity Amen. either. And we have that study. The word Jew never appears in the original scriptures. We have that in the study. So, Tommy, we want to keep it short and sweet. So, please, uh, our rest is in Jesus Christ, the true Israel. Amen to the Son of God, to the Father. Yes. To the Father. We can't forget the Father, can we, Tommy? No. We want them both, their spirit, in us. Praise you, Jesus. So, Tommy, you have any more to say? I'm going to end with that. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll be sure to put the link to this study in the description below. Please uh, download it and study it out, and please leave comments. And uh, if you have any extra information, please you know, let us know and help us with our study as well. God bless. Yep. Take care, and God bless.